Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Thanks for joining Gate. I'm your host, Jeremy. Thanks so much for tuning in. So last night, I was going over a hypothetical problem, and I'll detail that problem in a moment, and I thought I could easily solve it in Excel. And after about an hour of trying, I realized two things. One, I really suck at Excel. Brother, uh... So if there is an Excel guru that's maybe watching, drop a comment on how I should have solved this problem. Two, I realized there are things that really annoy me about Excel. I thought I would do two things. Number one, go over what the major differences are between Excel and Access, and especially the six things that are really annoying. Two, I'm going to tell you guys how I solve this problem in Access in about 10 minutes using a query that I normally don't use. Normally, this type of query in my world is kind of a mistake, but it works beautifully in this example. Stay tuned. Okay, so now the problem. So on the left, we have this fake transaction list. On the right is a user-defined keyword lookup list. So for instance, Phillips, I know the keyword Phillips is fuel. Mr. Gas is fuel. If I see Sprouts, it's groceries, etc. So the problem is, how do I automatically categorize this transaction list with these categories in Excel? Now, I tried things like uh, SUMIF and uh, combining that with the search function, and I could not get it to work. And I know I could do it in VBA, but it would just be a huge pain in the butt because you could do this much easier in Access. So my question to the Excel people is, how would I do this? How would I take this list of transactions? Then how would I, well, I know how to define a keyword lookup, but how then do I say, okay, this transaction here is retail, this transaction here is fuel, so that way I can add up and see my uh, categorical purchases. So now with that question out of the way, and I'll show you the solution at the end in Access, here are a few things that really annoy me about Excel. So number one, it's very unstructured. So here's the literally the Excel file I was working on last night. I've got just a sources here. I thought, okay, I can categorize everything and maybe put some sources on a source worksheet. And then I started playing around with how to do all this stuff. And you can see there are things all over the place. I was experimenting with buttons and drop downs and doing VBA. Here's a table over here or what Excel calls a table. It's not a real table like a database is, but I just I just found everything so unstructured and it was just so annoying. Um, and that make thing that actually makes things really difficult when you start coding. Number two, the other thing that bugged me is that there are no table indexes. So as you start to get a very large spreadsheets, you know, you start to filter the columns, it gets really slow. Uh, there's a um, an Excel file that I work with daily that is about almost 600,000 rows. And that sucker is really slow when you open it in Excel. I have to um, import it into Access, and then it's much faster to use. And one of the contributing factors is tables do not use indices or index and index. So this is actually what's called a list object in Excel VBA. Um, they call it a table to the users when you make them. Number two, the object model makes it really difficult to learn VBA in Excel. Believe it or not, the way Excel is structured, even though it looks easier than Access, it is actually more difficult to code for VBA. So for instance, notice in Excel you have different sheets here. And let's say I have a table here, and I've called this table number one. So to access this table, to get to this table from within code in Excel, I have to know what sheet that table is on to get to it. I can't be like in Access, where in Access, a table is accessible everywhere. So if I have a table number one in Access, it doesn't matter where I'm at in the database, I can just code and talk to that table. Whereas in Excel, unless I'm wrong, again, I'm not a guru, you cannot get to the table directly from Excel VBA. You have to know that it's in sheet one, and it's actually a part of a collection called, I believe, list objects. And then this would be one of the named list object items within that collection for that sheet. If I move over to source two and I try to say, hey, look up table one, it will fail because there is no table one on sources, even though there's a table one over here. So that was another thing. Number three is file inflation. So I've seen this before in multiple Excel files. Those, those files can get really large. I've seen one that was only two sheets big and it really wasn't even that large. And it was 20 megabytes. So someone emailed me that bunker buster of a file and it was huge. Um, as the file ages, it'll, it'll just get corrupt. It's hard to make forms. So here we are, you know, I would love to make just a, a great form where the user could do the drop downs and you know do the stuff right. So I can go over here and do insert forms 
and it's going to make me turn on autosave and then log into my Microsoft account. It's just that there are no real native capabilities that I know of in Excel to make forms, whereas in Access, that's a built-in capability. And finally, there's no SQL. No, God, please, no! In, in Excel, you have a lot of these functions like search. You know, you've got all these crazy functions like search and some ifs and whatnot. But I, I will contend right now, it is way easier to just learn SQL. SQL makes so much sense. It's very structured and it makes sense. And, you know, when you learn SQL, you can carry that knowledge to other databases, not just Access. Here, again, as a refresher, is our original problem. So here's how I did it in Access. First, I split both of those uh, sections into their own tables. So here are the transactions that I did in Access, and then I made a table categories. So how do you make that as a query without using VBA and looping through it. So one solution, if you guys are maybe familiar with VBA, is one way to do this is I could have opened the transactions in a record set, and then row by row, I could have analyzed all of the categories, and when I found a match, I would have tagged it. But here is the query I used that, again, is one of the strangest queries I've ever written and is normally not even something I would use. I used a two-table query with no join whatsoever. So if you're unfamiliar with how that works in a query, I've made up two fake tables. One is four fields, A, B, C, and D, table letters, and then one is table numbers, one, two, three, four. Now, if I open a blank query and I just drag letters and I drag numbers without any kind of join and I just run it, what happens is every row in here gets output with every row in here. So there should be 16 results, and that's what we see. So letters and numbers, every row in the letters table was output with every row in the numbers table. So there are 16 results here because it was four times four. So how did I get this to work in the solution? Well, I did a similar thing. I did table transactions, and then I put in table queries without a join, so I know that this transaction list is going to go through this table queries for every category. But how do I how do I filter it? Well, here's the solution. I just did an in-string function that filters out the non-hits. So the in-string of one, I look at the transaction list and then a keyword lookup. So I basically said, okay, if we have an in-string and I look through that transaction list, and I'm looking at the keyword lookup, and it's greater than zero, I'm kind of using it like a Boolean. So if it's greater than zero, here's my greater than zero, then that output is true. And so here is the output to that query. Here is my transaction list and the amounts, and then it found the category. It filtered out everything where the end string failed or had zero, and then now I have my categories, and that's it. Super simple.